Abakari is going nowhere. That's the ruling of a federal high court in a suit seeking to extradite the former Super Cup to the United States of America. But the judge had more to say. We have analysis of this ahead on The Breakfast. It seems all is not well between the Nigerian graduates from Ukrainian universities and the Nigerian Medical Council. What exactly are the issues and what is the way forward? We also have in-depth analysis of some of today's newspaper headlines in Off the Press. Very good morning to you. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. Wish you live uh, or from our studios at Victoria Island Lagos. Wet morning, but we're here and we're glad that you are joining us today. Well, thank you for joining us as well. I am Messi Boko. And I'm Kofi Botex. Welcome. Mercy, we are waiting with a uh, bitter breath for, for news. You know, what were they go, what decision were they going to take? Um, is it that they're going to call off the strike? In looking at some of the, the news and the statements coming from both ASU and the federal government. And if you remember, um, ASU had, uh, the, the president had mandated the Minister of Education to take over the negotiations from the Minister of Labor and Employment, Senator Dr. Chris Ngigi. The Minister of Education being Adamu Adamu now. Uh, some have said, well, uh, from Nkige to Adamu has been from frying pan to fire. fire. Well, so the decision to extend or to declare total indefinite strike um, is, is a blow um, to the students and parents who are hoping, and even lecturers, that this will be resolved. The strike is in protest against government's failure to release uh, the revitalization funds for the universities, a failure to release the white paper of the visitation panel to the universities and the failure to deploy the University Transparency Accountability System, uh, UTAS, for the payment of uh, salaries and allowances of lectures. This is a whole topic that will take more than one hour to unpack. But what, what are your thoughts on this, Mercy? They have finally made a statement. We didn't have a, a statement where we heard something has been released. But what are your thoughts on this? Quite a sad one. Well, so there's also a, a hashtag on Twitter that says that ASU strike must end. And that's the hashtag. <laughs> oh. I, I mean, it, it would be great to see that ASU strike end. That's, that's it in all of it, right. whatever it is. Right. But one would think that if you look at the education sector, uh, government should understand the dynamics of having an economy or a country that you have education as the bedrock. Because, I mean, that's what, you know, I grew up to hear, that education is the bedrock of every nation. But it feels different. And it feels like we're acting contrary to that. I'm wondering where that particular phrase or statement originated from. Maybe after now, I probably have to find it out. And why a lot of persons have not even, you know, live up to the expectation. So if you look at it to, to the other, I mean, it's a two-way thing. Uh, before me. I'm, I'm just wondering why an agreement would have been entered in 2009 and was not respected. And so uh, the spokesperson after the meeting, of course, a representative of government had said that 80% uh, of the agreement has been met and they have done X, Y, Z. But you see, it's a trust issue. So they're saying like, well, there's no reason why this strike action should still linger. But it's a trust issue here. Would you blame them if ASU says, hey, we do not even believe, uh, we, we, we can't even go ahead and say we're calling off the strike because 80% of it has been implemented or 80% issues have been considered. And so we have done X, Y, Z. There's a collaboration of a payment system. We're doing X, Y, Z. And you should go ahead and call off the strike. And people are saying, hey, we're not calling off the strike because... 80% is not what we're asking for. We're asking for 100. But we've gotten to a point where there's an agreement that has been met. I, I don't even imagine. I mean, I mean every other time I still, uh, you know, ask myself. But we're still talking about 2009. And if you look at the issues that are being raised by ASU, are they really valid? Are there issues that matter? Should it be considered? So in all of this, my take would be that the strike should end. I don't know who has to compromise, but the strike should end for the betterment of the students, because at the end of the day, it would be it. And I, I really feel very sorry for those who are still, you know, in the process of trying to acquire a degree, you know, going through the universities and what have you. It becomes quite worrisome. I really feel very sad and, and very, very sad for them. But I know that some of them have moved on. They've actually decided to acquire a skill. I hear that some people are saying they will not return to school. But 
whatever the case is, we, we know that the masses are going through a lot. I mean, these students are suffering. It's time to get them back, you know, to the classrooms and let them go back go back you yes. know to the classroom so whatever the case is let the strike end that's my case well well, well you, you're absolutely right that the um, education ministry spokesman uh, ben gong had said that the federal government had implemented 80 percent of of us's demands now the question is uh, <laughs> is is it, is it true because i mean i spoke to some people out there say in the public say hey what do you guys think about this and a lot of people do not do not believe anything government well, says. Well, there's a trust issue we're saying. Yes, yes. A lot of people do not believe anything government says. So, but I mean, if it is true that the federal government of Nigeria um, has implemented about eighty percent of the demands of ASU, like Ben Gong is saying, then do Nigerians will Nigerians think it right for ASU to still be on strike and now to even graduate? Uh, no pun intended, but to graduate this strike from being a, um, a, an indefinite. A, a warning strike or an extended strike to being an indefinite strike. That is a question to be asked, and I just will have to answer that. But this is what Ben Gong said. He says, quote, as regards the next steps, the government has already inaugurated a committee to harmonize the IPPIS, UTAS, and UP3. This will ensure the government will pay with only one payment platform that will harmonize all the technical peculiarities. Um, so he said, if you bring some demands and almost 80% have been attended to, there is no need to drag the strike anymore. Um, you know, so so this is it. But but Asu could argue that um, you're now coming with another committee to implement what you should just go ahead and just implement. Also, they've in recent times said that um, when they had the opportunity to meet with the federal government, they went only to see the Professor Nimi Briggs committee. Now, I, I think that, I think that um, for the negotiations to move from Chris Ngege to Adamo Adamo. It's been from frying pan to fire. That's what I think. Adamo Adamo is a tough nut. He's a tough cookie. Um, at, at, at some instances, some will even describe him as a, a, a stubborn individual. I'm sorry to use the word snow, disrespect intended to him. But if you remember the last time uh, NAD, the National Association of Nigerian Students, paid him a courtesy visit uh, over some issues, in fact, this same issue, um, he was alleged to have worked them out. Though I never saw that as a walkout, I just saw that it was a quick dismissal. I mean, he just said, okay, we, let's talk, okay, we're done, I'm out. But he was alleged to have walked out on them, only for him to call them back and take pictures with them and all that. So he's, he's, um, he's a hard nut. You know, he's very close to the president. Um, um, one of those few ministers who would always find, who could find a way uh, to London when the president is on treatment. Um, and, um, of course, he, he, he takes no prisoners. So, I haven't seen or heard that since the negotiations started, that Adamo Adamo has directly met with the ASU um, negotiating team. I know that he says he's been in, in talks with people on the phone, probably with ASU officials on the phone, but to meet with them one-on-one. -on -one and I think in... in in a way, maybe the ASO officials and negotiating team, they've been disappointed that each time they go for negotiations, they've met the, meet, uh, the Professor Nimi Briggs Committee. This committee is a committee that was uh, initially uh, set up to, to negotiate some aspects of the demands with them. And according to us, they had concluded everything with the Professor Nimi Briggs Committee. And they've also repeatedly said that the federal government is not serious about ending this strike. They've also said each time they've met with the Professor Nimi Briggs Committee since the education minister took over, what they say is that there's nothing new on the table. They're only, only coming to beggars to end the strike. That's what Asu keeps saying. They, they put nothing new on the table. They're only coming to beggars to end the strike. Um, so for the union to call it an indefinite strike now, it means that things definitely got worse. We, we got some sense of things getting better in the press, on, in the papers, when they were saying that, oh, um, everything has been sorted out. The minister said so. Everything has been sorted out. All that's left is just um, whether we're to pay them for the months that they've been on strike. Um, but this is proven not to be the case, and this is where we are at the moment. Okay, we, we'll move away from that. Uh, we also have more interesting top trending, and another is that uh, suspected quarters kill MC Oluomo's loyalists in Lagos, and that's been generating a lot of reaction. I mean, if you follow the story of you being live in Lagos or outside of Lagos, I'm probably sure you would have stumbled on, you know, the video that's made the rounds. It's been very, very, uh, it's a scary video. I mean, you could actually see uh, the action being taken place. Uh, it's a time where we have a lot of smartphones out there. And so at the slightest uh, provocation or a slightest incident or event, you, you could actually see 
a recording of what's happening. But really, really sad. I mean, this conversation, I would say that, is one that we can speak for over and over. There's been a lot of thoughts about this particular one. He's known as uh, Sule, Alaji Sule. That's how he's been called. And uh, you also have him popularly known as Ariko, uh, there in my 12, uh, mile 12 area in Lagos right there. And so uh, tension has not ceased from mile 12 as at yesterday that's according to the report that we have but it feels like the police are on top of the situation uh, because you probably would have police van being stationed and having all of that patrol now uh, the, the fact that it was being reported that there was a court clash is what worries me because if you talk about a court clash you would have a group and another group confronting themselves but this was from the video that made the rounds you could see uh, an attack on an individual. I mean, like how many persons? One, two, three, four, about five of them or thereabouts attacking an individual. And so a lot of persons have said that that's a call clash. How do you even define that as a call mm -hmm. clash? Mm -hmm. Because it was really an attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we saw that particular video, if I haven't seen it. Well, I mean, for the fact that uh, we can't even put out that video for uh, some reason, uh, we would have actually put that up. But I'm saying that if you see what even transpired, uh, he was beaten, stabbed, machete, what have you, all sort of things until uh, he, he died. And, and, and the reaction on uh, different social media spaces that, oh, those who were making recording of this you know, incident, couldn't they have stopped him? And some people are like, are you crazy? Don't you understand what's going on? As of yesterday, it was also reported that those who came out, uh, traders who live around this access, came out to display their goods, were told not to. They were confronted that they should stay away and all of that. So it feels like the area is uh, tense. That was yesterday's report. But right now, the uh, report also says that the police presence is very much available. And we're hoping that that would make, you know, um, you know, make a lot of sense. And uh, all of the fear that the people might probably would have would have disappeared with the presence of the police, you know? That's, that's what it is. Mm. But right. um, yeah. they say it's a court clash. People say it's court and court-related activities. And this is not just, you know, peculiar to legal state. It cuts across because courts uh, and court-related activities are across the entire state of the Federation. I know that you're itching to say something. So no, no, I'm, 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 just, I'm just enjoying what your, your analysis because you're saying because where have you had uh, a, you know, a number of people being killed you know, related to the transport sector repeatedly like you've had in Lagos State? I, I always say this, and I'll say this without, without, without any, any reservations. There are 40 years of government in Lagos State which is the biggest city in Africa and is said to be the fifth largest economy in the world, in Africa, sorry. You have the federal government, state government, local government, and then the fourth tier is the, is the Agbero government. Mm -hmm. yeah, I let that sink in. There are four tiers of governance, government in Lagos State. The first one is the federal government, mercy, Second is the state government, third is local government, fourth is Agbero government. And that says a lot about the state of things in Lagos State. And obviously we know chatter about all oh, um, people saying of presidential candidate, because Tinwo was also trending yesterday, the presidential candidate of, um, of, of the All Progressives Congress, being a former governor of Lagos State, is the one who introduced Agbero to Lagos State. That is not true. Tinwo did not introduce Agbero to Lagos State. It's been in existence before time and was enabled, you know, by um, the drop in the Nigerian economic situation, especially when the structural adjustment program kicked in. Um, so these, these boys had to go to the parks from the communities and the cities, you know, uh, the enclaves had to go into the parks to see how they can make ends meet. But um, these politicians have, have um, seen them as a, a veritable tool to entrench themselves politically. And um, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a cocktail, a very bitter cocktail, very sour, tasteless cocktail of, of um, gangsterism, mafia-style operations, and cultism laced with politics, you know, and unionism. If you go back to the history of the NURTW, you see that several unions around the country from north, south, east, east, and west, decades ago, were brought together. 
And then you ask yourself, where, how does a group or union move from being a union about the welfare of drivers to becoming uh, um, a vehicle to tax the tomato seller on the pavement, the sidewalk, or the wheelbarrow pusher, all right? to now start killing themselves. The history and the trajectory of such incidents have, has shown that it's usually a battle for supremacy. It's usually a battle for supremacy. Now, there, there are rumors that this man, I recall, was um, also in, into cultism as well. You know, what we call cultism, I call it gangsterism, because it's all gangsterism. It's all gangsterism, really, if you look at it in the real sense of the word. And, um, I mean, the, the connections with government cannot be uh, overlooked. We can't, we can't overlook it. Um, if you look at the body language of the legal state government in recent, in the past, when these incidents have read their ugly heads around legal state, when you expect the government to be working with the police to arrest the leaders of these unions and also the perpetrators of these killings and the violence in different parts of legal state, what do they do? What do they do? Mess, what do they do? They call them into hotels. The plushest hotels in legal state and sit them down to create peace amongst them. And then when they have their internal issues and some of the leaders of these unions are sacked, what do they do? They create new offices for them, all right, create new offices for them, and they give them appointments, you know. So how would you blame Legosha and some of them for saying government is responsible for how bad things have gone. How can you blame them? I mean, so, when, so who are the when, persons that are giving when, them disappointment? The leadership of this so-called mm. are being given government appointments. So, so who is giving the appointment to these Agberos? You, you, cannot, you cannot be um, a leader of a motor park in legal state without government um, official unapproval, unofficial approval. Now, why would government sit them down? In the hotel, as big as I don't mention the hotel, it's a very expensive hotel, and say, so Let's talk peace. When people have been killed, when the law has been broken, these guys use guns, use knives, use sticks, use cutlasses, and all that thing, all those uh, weapons against each other, and they disturb public peace. So, but don't you and then think you that call them and sit them down and say, Okay, let's talk. Hey, you stop but, shooting, but, 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 now. Hey, you stop killing now. Hey, you okay, who is the union? I, so, I know, I know that I know that there's a place for dialogue, but when people break the law, you, <laughs> you prosecute them, no, because I mean. People are being imprisoned for stealing, for stealing, I mean, for stealing chicken. Kofi, what for we're stealing saying chicken is, egg. Kofi, what we're saying for is stealing this. mobile phones. And there are people who go and start shooting the marketplace. You, if you follow the story of Inye Bege, Bege, market here, and, and Bege, they, they, they sit them down. Kofi, if you follow the story of Inye Bege, who's actually uh, been out of uh, the prison as he was held. Who's that? In the uh, the okay. lawyer in yeah. Uyo, I mean that particular lawyer, we talked about it right here, and he said that a lot of persons are in prison who are just uh, there in prison, and if you look at it, justice have not been served. I mean, uh, because they don't have what it takes, and so the judicial system have not, because some of them are very innocent, but because they've not had the opportunity to be heard. But let's even come back to the conversation. And in the course of it, you talked about. Uh, you know, a governor not being responsible for what it is. Now, it's not even that you would be the uh, the one laying the foundation because if we can establish, and some persons have established the fact that, yes, this is going on, this, there are settlements, they call these persons to different spaces and say, let's talk about peace. Why are you talking about peace? Why would government be indulging? That's what we're saying. So it's, it's, it's a very compromising situation that government is abating these persons, crime and criminality, or these gangs, like you want to call it, you know, cults and court related activities. It's not just peculiar, you know, to Lagos State, but it cuts across different states. But maybe in Lagos State, it takes a different dimension. And because yesterday, a lot of persons said, uh, when they saw the video, people queried those who were recording, why didn't you, you know, intervene? And we heard that, apart from those who were carrying out the havoc or carrying out this act, there were also other persons who were watching out for anyone who would intrude. It, it, so these persons have become even more, organized. you know, powerful than the entire structure. I have a question for you. And then, you know, government... I have a question for you. Go ahead. With, with the, last, um, the last, you know, incident that happened here at the Echo Market, you know, where was... Where it, did was it happen? At the Balogo Market, the Dimota, that exists, where there was a, a, a shooting, sporadic shooting, and people were running helter-skelter. It was, I think, in a week, on a weekend or so, and people... Um, had to run away and the market some parts were closed down you know um because of the public outcry 
certain persons were arrested. Now, I want to ask you, have you heard of any prosecution? Well, we never hear of any prosecution. Mm -hmm. All right, I think I've, I've done that. No, no, the, the truth is, it's not even that particular case. I've not heard, and we never hear of any prosecution. We never hear of, you know, bandits. We never hear of terrorists. We've never heard of this persons who commit crime. It feels like... And then that's why you will find a 16-year, 17-year-old getting involved in a kidnap situation. They are kidnapping because they feel like nothing happens. There's really nothing that's going to happen. We're just going to, you know, go, go on, carry out the act, and then move away because there's nobody to question us. Well. There's no system to question us. Mm. And is that really the case? So I would say that it's a combination of everything. Crime and criminality cannot thrive on its own. It's a system, uh, you know, that encourages all of this to happen. I mean, unfortunately, we live in a society where even those who should be calling this short are also part of these gangs. I mean, very top-level elite politicians and all of that. So what do you even expect? How can justice be meted? How come the, the security personnel are not effective? And is it that we don't know this person? Because in most cases, we know these persons, but we rather choose to sit down on the table and have conversations with them and negotiate where the law is very explicit about crime and, you know, the issue of mother. But we're hoping that this particular situation will be different because the world, I'm sure, is watching. Nigerians are watching at, uh, in the entire, you know, uh, states of the Federation. Mm. And I know that these persons were captured in uh, video because there was a recording of all of that. That the police would rise up and live up to their expectation and live up to, you know, the mandate and the reason that they were created. So if a mother was committed, we see those who were involved in mothering. So I don't know if this case gets to court now. We're going to look for, <laughs> you know, until, until people are you, are you aware, guilty. I don't are you know, that, I'm just saying. But are, you, are you aware that um, um, uh, some time ago, um, these Agbero donated a car, a very expensive vehicle, to a police area commander in Lagos State? Who? You know, so, so people are asking. No, I didn't okay, get that. Uh, you know, I, are you aware that some time ago, these uh, were donated a, a, a very expensive vehicle to an area commander, police area so commander? So what are you saying? Um, so, so people were asking, I've been asking, how will that, the, you know, is a union meant to um, uh, look into the welfare of, uh, and to promote the welfare of um, those in the trans trans transportation sector? And some have been asking, okay, how, how are... Uh, Agbe were able to procure a vehicle for the police, and why would the police accept accept it? You know, you know. So some of these things are, you know, when, when money is involved, and this we know no, these it, things. Should, should it be when money is involved? We know, we know these but, things. But what happens to the rule of law and the principle of the rule of law that no one is a respecter of it? So, so, so no one is above you know, the law. You know, we have something called the code of conduct for public officers as well, and it also, you know, talks about receiving of gifts. And so, he, he, let's even say that... The, how, how can you, the, the how can you go arresting, arresting these guys when you're collecting gifts from them, like car? car. Okay, but... but Kofi, personal car, or they bought a personal car for a senior police officer. No, Take, so, not, not your own. Take. <laughs> no, but let's it. even say that the, the, the law, that particular aspect failed. But what also happens to the rule of law and the principle of it? That no one, no one, when he says that no one is above the law, including the president, no matter how powerful you are, no one is above the law. But you also have in the system where there are systems that are created to check the excesses, you know, and show that this rule of law is obeyed to the latter. It's just a, a systemic failure. But we need to move on. Okay. Um, we, we have some more. Of course, uh, uh, there was some news, sort of breaking news from the uh, a part of Lagos where they call Redemption, Redemption Camp. And for those of you who are aware of, of things, in, in, in the country, Redemption Camp is, uh, is, it houses the, uh, well, I call it the headquarters or the, the, the camp, the meeting grounds of um, one of the biggest churches in the world, uh, the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And uh, people start saying, oh, you know, bad news flies fast. Uh, the Redemption Camp is on fire. There's an explosion there. But as time went on, it was clear, uh, the, the, the situation became clearer, uh, that the fire got at a gas plant, a gas plant near the Redemption Camp. It's at the Moe bus stop. That's, um, you know, on your way between Lagos State and Ogun State and Lagos State. Uh, uh, that road has been really down with traffic in recent time. We covered it on the trending segment yesterday. So it was a gas plant, um, not the church itself or not any of its facilities. You can see the fire raging over there. 
um, this is in Ogun State. Uh, Moe bus stop is in the Obafemi Owode local government area of Ogun State. Um, it was gathered the explosion caused panic in the area. Residents uh, and workers at various institutions within the area had to run helter skelter to uh, get to safety. Um, so that that is that. It's not a redemption, redemption camp. Even if it's not a redemption camp, it's still a, a it's sad close. one. Yeah, someone's business and property. Um, it will lead us to the conversation about um, the location of these gas plants. Yeah, everywhere. And sometimes safety is thrown to, to the dogs. You know, the um, S12 DPR, they were in charge of uh, uh, approving gas plants. They have their, their uh, rules and they have the procedures to follow. I think now that has moved on to the uh, NMDPR, which is a new agency that has succeeded the DPR, they have rules, they have what you should do, but most times it's flouted. I mean, in my work as a journalist in previous times, uh, you know, before I came on Plus TV, I remember there was a case where uh, an estate you know, committee, Residents Association, Mercy, uh, wrote to me um, to pursue and discuss on my program on radio back in the day um, the location and sighting of a particular gas plant in their uh, vicinity. They didn't want it there because they said the gas plant was uh, being bothered by houses, but they living so close to it, and they felt that it was impossible for such a gas plant to pass any um, approval test, you know. So these are some of the issues surrounding But, but, but apart explosion. from that, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, apart from the fact that that's a gas plant and it's very close, you know, to the redemption camp, and a lot of people would, uh, as of yesterday, you had different reports saying that it was the camp, but of course there were going to be fact checks and verification to ensure that that's the case. I always say that uh, the incidents and occurrence that we experience in Nigeria is a man-made situation. Unfortunately, we're very, unfortunately, we experience what we experience, but really, we're very lucky, but it's just that we're not careful. It's not a volcanic eruption. It's something that happened due to, you know, negligence, I would rather say, uh, apart from the gas plant. Because for every time that you have an incident happening, especially a fire explosion, you will know that someone had failed at her responsibility, someone had done something wrong, and you know, those who should check the excesses or check the activities of the other person had failed. So why would you have a gas plant you know, in sensitive areas? It goes beyond the gas plant. I move around, I mean, some days back, around your Nero axis, I was really bitter about seeing a filling station that's situated around residential area. Now, this is not just, this is one out of so many in Lagos State and in different parts of the country. We have a lot of gas station, filling station in residential areas, and it's a disaster that is waiting to happen. But before all of this, uh, you know, structures are erected, they should follow a procedure. That's what we're saying. There should be some level of approval. Who approves all of these structures? Who approves a gas station to be erected where you have uh, people leaving a commercial area or residential area? It's very dangerous. I mean, that's why you say, oh, environment in, uh, impact assessment should be carried out. But that's what it is. I mean, the once upon a time, prior to now, uh, I find in a certain city where you have a gas station in between a church and also uh, a house, no, a school. Imagine when, what happens when there's an explosion. And so we would say that the devil has come. We we'll blame the witches in our villages and anywhere in the world, but fail to understand that we had failed ourselves. But this building don't just wake up. This gas station don't wake up and happen in different spaces and different parts. It's really dangerous. How do you even have a gas station close to a school? To a residential area. These are, we're supposed to have areas where you have all of these structures erected, but that doesn't happen. What happens to town planning? What happens, you know, to, uh, you know, the government and all the agencies that would have been created because they exist, but everyone seems to be paying attention, not paying attention to it and looking away. And that's why these disasters have continued to happen. But we're hoping, like always, I'm very hopeful, and I think that we'll get to a point where we do the needful and we will save ourselves, you know, all of the debts that we get to experience and not call, you know, uh, the village people and our old parents saying that they might be responsible for what's going on. That's the size of a conversation this morning on Top Trending. We'll take a break. When we return, it will be time for us to go through the front pages of the National Dailies. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us.